everybody. How are you guys doing? It's Saturday night. I'm glad you're doing that much, Woo. We have a great show for you guys tonight. Muhammad Jabari is here, you many college students. We also have the music of Grant Williams. Grant Williams. And this is really cool. We have a great title sponsor, ESC Consulting. Here's the deal. They gave us money to give away in a creative way. So here's what's going to happen. We have ordered food from Big Whiskies across the alley. That delivery person is going to come here. They're going to find themselves on stage, and I'm going to give them a $1,000 tip. Woo! All right, I'm going to walk to the desk now, so can you clap for me right now? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's do this. Um, oh, oh, oh. I forgot my folder down here. Let's see. Hmm. What do we have here? Oh, I know. Let's do things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Things I've noticed. Here we go. I've noticed that I would like internet advertisers to know that I bought the couch I was looking for, so no, no need to pester me anymore. <laughs> I got it. Stop it. Uh, by the way, I got a new chair. Can't see it, but it feels good on my butt. <laughs> All right. I've noticed I wish I could see myself the way my dog sees me. Really, really tall. <laughs> I've noticed that I thought adulthood would be more sharp dress cocktail parties, but it's mostly just trying to stay awake. <laughs> um, I've noticed that if someone attempts a cool handshake with me, there is a 100% chance I'm going to ruin it. That happened to me today. <laughs> OK. I've noticed that life is like a box of chocolates. You weren't planning on buying it, but it was only $4.99 at Walgreens. <laughs> and finally, I've noticed that there's no good way to sneak into a tent. <laughs> That's things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, we have a video we want to show you guys now we think is important for you to see. Check it out.
Stop Recapture Now. I believe that's a real website. Did we build that website? Pardon me? It will be a real website. <laughs> All right, we got anything else? Do we got anything else? No. Good. Okay, do we have anything else? No. Stick around. We'll see if we have anything else. We'll be right back. That comedy bit brought to you by Bush Ramlow and Shore CPAs. Set design and construction brought to you by Elamoose, Digital Quill Studio, and Skinny Theatrical Design and Fabrication. Guest booking provided by Gig Salad. Additional sponsorship provided by Big Whiskey's official American restaurant and bar of the Mystery Hour. How you guys doing? Hey, we've got a great, uh, we've got a great guest, but somebody else has arrived. Uh, come on out. Hi there, what's your name? Christy. Christy? Uh, Christy, are you surprised that your delivery brought you onto stage? Yes. Yes? yes. <laughs> and I'm you, usually in the kitchen. You're usually in the kitchen? Yeah. And you work at Big Whiskey's? I do. Yeah? What else can you tell me about yourself? Um, I'm a mom of three. Yeah? <laughs> How old are they? Uh, I have a six-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 20-year-old. <laughs> that sounds expensive. It is. Very. Yeah. Braces. Braces? <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Um, well, first, I have something for you. Um, you're our favorite delivery person of the night. So, so you get that bowling trophy. And then also, we had someone um, gift us with some money. And so we want to give you a $1,000 tip. Say that again. I have someone a little more special to give this to. Well, dang it. I'm just kidding. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You're not going to accept it? I'm going to give it to somebody that deserves it. Wow. <laughs> How about that? She's here? Come on out. What, what's your name? Ashley. Your name's Ashley? Yeah. And um, I don't, I shouldn't. I'm expecting, yes. Say it? Yeah, three weeks left. Say what you're expecting? Uh -huh. Okay, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to start that. Okay. Um, well, there you go. You have $1,000 now. What do you think? I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> They're pretty great. All right, well, uh, you guys are done now, and I'm gonna go eat this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she just gave it away. That was amazing. We're only generous because someone gave us money. She's actually generous. She's Ashley Generous. All right, uh, I forget what we're doing now. We're doing a show. <laughs> hey, we have a great guest tonight. We also have a great guest sponsor. Papa! It's the History Museum on the Square. Go there while you're alive, because you also might go there later when the things that you have, um, you don't have anymore, because you're dead. So go there now. <laughs> Hey, our guest tonight uh, is truly just very fascinating. He's a, a, a college student here at Missouri State, um, and he's a Yemeni, he's, he's, he's from Yemen, and his name is Mohammed Jabari. Please put your hands together for Mohammed. Come on out, Mohammed. <laughs> How you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Good. Do you, um, 
if I gave you $1,000, would you give it away? Just say yes, doesn't matter. No, I'm not going to give it away. Yeah, you're not giving it away. I'm not going to lie on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I almost just fell backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I got, I first heard of you through um, uh, uh, KSMU, the, the local NPR affiliate, did a story on you. Um, and I was just fascinated with it. So, I guess first, tell me why you decided to, to study here. Well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'll put an analogy for, to that. Um, you've all heard about arranged marriage. And I think the process that I went to come to the United States is the same process as that. Uh, my mom started talking to me about the United States. Uh, my both parents studied the United, in the United States. They graduated from the University of Tennessee engineering both. And uh, it changed how they thought, changed how they lived, it changed how they, they pursued their life, uh, changed, 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 actually the whole family changed by the thinking of my parents and, and it was kind of interesting. And then my mom wanted me to go through that, the yeah. amount of growth that came. So kept telling me about the United States and what to do and all that kind of stuff. And then I realized that this is the place for me to go right now. Yeah. I applied for uh, universities and I just got accepted in MSU and I came here to Springfield. Yeah. Out of all the places. Yeah, out of all the places. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, Yemen is in the news quite a bit and it's, I, I guess I don't know how you describe it, but it's, it's been in a rough spot for, for several years. That is true. Well, Yemen has been going through an unstable stage for quite uh, more than a decade so far. Uh, the latest episode is what's happening since the Arab Spring, the chaos that happened. And then the latest thing is what happened in 2014 when the rebels took over the whole country and then Saudi Arabia along with other 10 countries started bombing uh, Houthis at the rebels. And it's a humanitarian crisis now in the whole country. You have more than 1.1 million people with cholera, the greatest outbreak cholera in the world today. And you have uh, more than 10,000 people dead, you have 50,000 wounded, uh, more than 10 million people un under the need of, of, of food and, and stuff. I mean, it's devastating to me specifically because when I call my friends and I call my family and people have not been getting paid, people have not been uh, finding food, there's fluctuation in the prices of food, there's inflation, the, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just crazy. People are dying, literally dying every single day. Yeah. And it's, so it's this kind of tragic situation, and you kind of watch it from afar, but also you have family there, so you're, you're very close to it. Um, but you, I understand, you're kind of deciding, do you, want to, do you want to go back and try to help your country? So the thing is, I, I feel responsible just being privileged to come to the United States and to learn as much as I've learned so far from this culture and if to see the bright side of humanity, honestly, people, I realize that people don't have to suffer to live in suffering. That's what people in Yemen and don't understand is they think that everyone lives the same way outside Yemen. No, it's mm -hmm. not the same way. It's just dictatorships wanted us to, the dictatorship wanted us to think this way. They blocked their information, blocked everything. It's just devastating. And I feel responsible to go and to teach the people how their lives could be a lot better. To show them just, I feel like only if you show the people what could lives be, uh, they, will, they will fight for change even more. Mm -hmm. You know, they fought for change in 2011, but they didn't know what was the, what was the alternative. Okay. Yeah, yeah, to give them a vision of what it, exactly, what it could be. Exactly, exactly. So would that look like politics to you? Do, would you want to get into politics or would you want to I know you're talking engineering, would you want to go into engineering? There is, there is many things you can actually do change through. I mean, you can start change, you can start with a change from your siblings or your family and change their perception about the world, their perception about everything around them. Just there's this change in terms of giving education to, to people. The, the massive change that we can accomplish today in the world is just giving people education. Because once people are educated, people are enlightened. It's just like a light. There's no darkness in a room if you have a light. If you have a flash, there's no... Education is the same way. Why I'm saying this is because I grew up and my mom being a very educated person, I noticed the difference between me and my peers and my colleagues and, mm. and classmates and uh, the way my grades were awesome, uh, good, my, how I dressed, how I spoke, how I thought about everything 
Right? Yeah. It was just a huge difference. And, uh, and so we had, we had coffee a few weeks ago. And, and I, I don't see any. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm just joking. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we have options, is what I'm saying. Water, no water, water. <laughs> um, but when, when we had coffee, uh, I left that, I was like, oh, you're impressive. You're like a leader, and you could be president of Yemen someday. <laughs> do you get, I mean, that's, maybe that's overstating it, but do you, I feel like you, your hope, like the reason, you, your, your hopes for Yemen, I feel like you could go and do these things. That's, that's, that's actually true. Uh, <clears throat> you know, one thing you said to me that I think is really interesting is you're, um, you find yourself kind of like in the middle in the sense that, and you can, you can tell me if I'm paraphrasing this right, that you, you, tell your, um, you tell your friends back home that Americans aren't bad, and you tell your friends here that Muslims aren't bad. Is that, is that what you that's, said? That's exactly true, because I think of myself as... Uh, Let's see, there's misconception mis uh, and the misinterpretation for who Americans are back home, yeah. uh, obviously due to the military and all that kind of stuff yeah. happening today. But at the same time, I feel responsible to represent my people here as much as possible. So just to tell people that, hey, I'm here and not everyone is violent, not everyone yeah. is closed-minded. And at the same time, I talk to my friends, it's like, What's happening with politics, what's happening with drones, or whatever is happening, it's not the people, yeah. it's the politicians. I mean, yeah. it's the governments. As much as we don't have control over our governments, I can't blame the Americans for the control on their government, the same thing. I think, yeah, so I, I look at you, I think it's really interesting as a, you're a bridge, right? You kind of bridge both sides. And I think that's needed and really incredible what you're doing. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the future president. Thank you. The future president of the United States. Yes, travel and accommodations provided by Hotel Vandeboer. Systematic Savings Bank, official bank of the mystery hour. Papo's Pizzeria and Pub, official pizza joint of the mystery hour. Tonight's musical guest brought to you by Bear Village. Welcome back. Hey, we have a great musical guest. Please put your hands together for Grant Williams. Grant.
We drive all night just finding where the fight is eastbound. Throw punches at the dark. Fill out the papers for the lady. Take our corner, get low. Memorize the boxes marked. This hole we made ourselves don't fit the shape that made us. Sometimes we can't find our own way out. And that factory of color leaves an afterglow. We can't see black and white. So great, man. That was yeah. awesome. Thank you. Loved it. Come on over. Hey, everybody. That's our show. Just so you know, Ted was having a box on the trophy tonight. Goes to Kate to learn. We will see you guys next week.